everybody. I am recording this very first video right after I did the introductory video, but in the future I think I'm going to be doing them every couple days. I'll try to keep up and put them out as fast as possible. The first question we're going to talk about is what exactly are Chinese fantasy novels to begin with? There's a little bit of confusion about that um, that started a few years ago when the, the scene first started and first uh, became popular. I'll explain in a second. I'm using Chinese fantasy novels to refer to a bunch of different types of novels within the blanket of Chinese web novels. Now, as you can imagine, Chinese web novels are novels which are published online. There are a few really popular websites in China. The authors uh, publish stories pretty much of every single genre that you can imagine. Everything from the fantasy genres to sports uh, to modern day, time travel. A lot of the websites have a special side of the website set aside for female audiences. So you're going to have things more romance oriented and less action oriented. So those are two different types of novels, web novels and then actual literature are very different. One of the big differences with web novels is the quality. Generally speaking, generally speaking, the writing quality is not the same as you're going to get when you go buy a book at a bookstore, even in China. They, the books are not edited. The authors pump out a lot of content, usually multiple chapters per day. Also, they tend to go for a really long time, usually years. So a lot of times the novels end up being thousands of chapters long, or at least a thousand or maybe more than a thousand or thousands of chapters long. They're really just pulp fiction and they're designed mostly toward younger readers. High school and college age kids tend to gravitate toward them more. Then once they graduate and start working and you know getting into their lives, they tend to drop away from reading those books as often. Okay, so what are the Chinese fantasy novels that are part of the Chinese web novel scene? Well, I'm thinking of three main genres that I would refer to as fantasy that are part of that category. Now, incidentally, all of these types of novels can exist in regular printed literature form as well. But nowadays, the place you're going to find them most is online. So the first of those three is wuxia. Wuxia is a lot more common and it has a history that goes way back into printed form for many decades. Wuxia basically is martial arts fiction. The heroes are people who exist in sort of an underworld of martial arts communities that tends to be in ancient China. Um, and usually they use the qi in their body to perform superhuman martial arts feats. There tends to be flying. Usually it's not Superman flying. It's more like maybe Spider-Man flying, except without the webs. They use the qi in their body to leap and to move very quickly. And they can do martial arts feats, um, you know, shooting things out of their hands or having their swords fly through the air, things like that. The martial arts in Usha tends to be a lot more uh, realistic than some of the other fantasy genres. A lot of times Usha is the kind of stuff where it almost seems like it could happen. Uh, usually it takes place, like I said, in ancient China, so sometimes it connects with real historical events or characters. Uh, there are a few really popular Wuxia novelists who, who published their novels not <laughs> on the web, before the web, um, and made the genre really, really popular. A lot of movies and television shows in China are based off of these Wuxia novels. So that's one of the ones that I would categorize as being kind of a Chinese fantasy story. The next is a lot more fantasy oriented, and that's called Xianxia. So in Wuxia, the Wu means martial, and the Xia means hero, or it could be interpreted different ways, but basically Wuxia is martial or martial arts heroes. Xianxia, the Xia character is the same, but the Xian means immortal. And that's not, the meaning of immortal is not um, that you can't die, or that you can't be killed, or that you live forever. Although, generally speaking, that is part of the deal. But the Xian refers to a mythological being or creature or person from uh, Chinese stories. And these are essentially like gods or some, some sort of divine being that live uh, in the heavens or in some other realm that's not the realm where mortal people live and hence immortal. Usually there's a contrast between the mortals, who are just normal people, and the immortals, who are more like gods. So in the Xianxia genre, the characters tend to practice some sort of cultivation, and I'll, I'm going to get into cultivation in a different video. Uh, for now, let's just say they practice, uh, they cultivate the qi in their body to eventually ascend to immortality. A lot of times these stories tend to be really, really long. Uh, the characters tend to start out as immortal, and then by the time they reach um, the highest levels, they're essentially gods. 
So in Wuxia, they can you know do some superhuman things, but in Xianxia, it goes beyond superhuman into like godlike or mythological. The characters, you know, as they build up their power, they can destroy trees, they can then destroy mountains, and then they can destroy cities, and then they can destroy continents, and then they can destroy planets, and then they can destroy solar systems. It just gets really, really cosmic in nature. There's a lot of mythological aspects to it. Uh, the magic that they tend to practice is usually some some type of so-called Taoist magic. The stories tend to draw heavily upon Taoism, uh, the philosophy and the religion from ancient China. There, are, it also draws heavily upon Buddhism and upon Hinduism and some other Eastern things. It's kind of a mishmash of just mythology and and uh, st stories from the past. So that's Xianxia. The next one is Xuan Huan. Xuan Huan is basically like a fusion of Western fantasy with uh, wuxia or Xianxia. It's kind of uh, draws on Asian stuff. It has a lot of Western stuff in it. Um, and it can really run the gamut between being on more toward one side or another. And there's another fourth genre that I didn't really want to get into much, and that's essentially just more Western style fantasy, which is also a really popular, but I wouldn't categorize that as a Chinese genre because they're basically kind of just copying the Western genres. So those are the three main genres of uh, Chinese fantasy, wuxia, xianxia, and xuanhuan. Now, just to be clear, pretty much all Chinese people know what wuxia is. It's a really important part of Chinese culture, and it has been for quite a while. Xianxia and Xuanhua are newer terms, although the Xianxia style stories with immortals and divine beings and things like that and mythology, those kind of stories actually go way back into Chinese history, but the use of Xianxia as a term to define a fictional genre is relatively new, and it's the same with Xuanhua. So a lot of Chinese people, especially if they're older than maybe their 20s, maybe have never even heard of it. As an example, my mother-in-law, she's a pretty traditional Chinese person. She actually likes to read and likes to watch TV. But when I first told her that I was translating Xianxia novels, she was like, what? And a lot of people are like that. Um, I even see the terms kind of mismatched even in China, like in news articles and things. Uh, the author who I translate, Argan, I've seen him classified as a Xianhuan novelist, although his main novels are all really just pure Xianxia novels. So I don't think it's really important for fans to necessarily be able to classify every single story, whether it's Xuan Huan or whether it's Xianxia. The real hardcore fans probably can. However, it's definitely a mistake to use Wuxia or to use Xianxia as a blanket term for all of Chinese fantasy novels. It would be like walking into Barnes & Noble and going over to the science fiction and fantasy section and saying, wow, these sword and sorcery novels are all great. I mean, even in the fantasy uh, fiction category in English literature, sword and sorcery is just one of many different kinds of genres, and it's the same with Chinese fantasy. So Chinese web novels have all kinds of different genres. One subsection is the fantasy section, and within that are going to be a few different categories. Please don't use one of the names of those categories, like wuxia or xianxia or xuanhuan, to describe all of them. It's just not right. And one of the reasons why that came to be a popular uh, thing to do was way back in the day, when the novels first started to explode in popularity, nobody really understood what the novels were. And one of the most popular translation sites where I tr put my translations, Wuxia World, is named Wuxia World. The truth is there's, there are almost no Wuxia stories on Wuxia World. Most of them are Xianxia or Xuanhuan stories or other genres. But because that website was called Wuxia World, a lot of people started just throwing around the terms Wuxia, Xianxia, and just using them for everything, when in fact that's not really the case. Well, this is the first video I did, and it looks like I've already gone way past <laughs> the time limit that I had anticipated. But I hope this answers some questions about the different genres. If you have any more questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. And if you have any questions that are on a different subject that you would like me to address, please leave them in the comments or send me a message, and I'll take that into consideration. Thanks very much, and I hope this helps.